Hi everybody. Welcome to Ordinary Differential Equations, the mathematical framework and tools for understanding, modeling, and predicting anything that moves. Welcome back. Today I'm going to discuss Appendix B, integration of some basic linear ODEs. I realize I may not have used the word integration um, very much, but integration is a method of solving. In fact, in the old, old days, it was considered that you had solved an equation if you had reduced it to integrals. People say that, refer to that as reduction to quadratures. And in solving the an arbitrary, autonomous, one-dimensional ODE, the formula I gave earlier, that's essentially um, what I was doing, reducing it to quadratures. Okay, so I'm going to step through a number of examples here. These, hopefully, you've seen most of them. And there's going to be a common pattern as to how I solve each example. They're going to be a little bit different, but the uh, same approach. And we're going to see, so we start off with the one-dimensional, simple one-dimensional linear ODE. And x out equals ax. A is just a constant. And then we're going to add a term to it, make it inhomogeneous or forcing x dot equals ax plus some function of time. And then we're going to let a vary in time. And we're going to see that the same method is used each time for solving it. And then we're going to go to higher dimensions and see where things break down. OK. Now, the usual way of solving this is to write dx dt as ax, uh, divide by, treat dx dt as a fraction, not allowable, but you do get the right answer. We're, now we're going to do something that's more mathematically rigorous. We're going to change variables. And in ordinary differential equations, changing variables is the key to solving the equations. Diagonalization is the perfect example. So for this vector field, we're going to change variables to, from x to u, a time-dependent transformation. Let x equal u e to the at. If you substitute that in the equation, you can see, you easily verify, that u dot equals 0. In some sense, this is the goal for any technique of differential equations reduce it to x dot equals zero, even in many dimensions. Of course, you can't always do that, but um, you can locally. There's a theorem in Arnold's book on ordinary differential equations called the rectification theorem, which talks about this, but I digress. So we can integrate that. u dot is zero. Tells me u of t is a u of zero. We substitute back in what u is in terms of x. We see immediately that u is 0 is x of 0. And therefore, that x of t is x of 0 e to the at. Slick. OK, now let's look at that same x dot equals ax. But now let's add a time-dependent term b of t to it. And now, how do we do this? Well, we're going to use exactly the same change of variables. And if we run that through the algebra, we don't get u dot equals 0 this time, but we get u dot is some function of t, e to the minus a t, b of t. We can integrate that for u of t, plug back in what u of t is in terms of x, getting the initial conditions right, and this is the, the solution to that equation. Um, well, in order for this integral to make sense, b of t has to have sufficient regularity for it to be integral. Integrable. Um, con continuity is a sufficient condition. All right. Now let's go backwards. We take the, uh, the b of t off, and let's consider a being time-dependent. 
Now this is where one dimensionality plays a big role. We're going to let x equal u e to the integral 0 to t a of t prime dt prime. I'm careful about not using dummy variables, not the integration, the limits of the integral being the same thing that we integrate over. We plug this in. Work a little algebra. And what we see is with this substitution, we get u dot equals zero again. We do the same thing. We substitute in for the initial conditions and for the um, function of time. We substitute back in what u is in terms of x. And this is what we have for the solution. Okay, so we have an exact solution. And now let's complicate it even further. Still in one dimension. x dot is a of tx plus, let's add this time dependent term to it. We're going to use exactly the same substitution that we did before. We run it through the algebra again, and we get this. The right hand side is just a function of time. We can integrate it. It's a little messier because um, the coordinate transformation, which allows us to integrate this, to, it depends on an integral, but we can keep track of everything. And working through it, this is what we get for the solution. Again, we need these integrals to make sense, so a of t and b of t need to be continuous or at least for the something for the integral to make sense. So all of these examples, these four examples that I did were one dimensional. Can we do this for higher dimensions? Well, let's start out the way I did for the one dimensional. x dot, x is n dimensional, is ax, x is going to be an n by n matrix. Let's make this substitution. x now is e to the at u. And if you do that, now you're going to get u dot equals 0. And the same, I mean, these are n-dimensional vectors, but they look formally like exactly what we've just did. That's the beauty of the matrix exponential. We solve this in exactly the same way. And this is the other way of solving this differential equation. Of course, we need to know what the matrix exponential looks like, or what it means in this case. And, and I defined that earlier as in terms of the exponential series. All right, next, the same. x dot is ax plus g of t. g of t is now a vector, depending upon the scalar t, the independent variable. We use exactly the same. We don't get u dot equals 0. We get this. We can integrate this up because the right-hand side of b33 is just a function of t. We can integrate it. And this is what we get, classic formula for, for this particular um, linear ODE. OK, now in one dimension, we let uh, A could be time dependent. Doesn't work for an n by n system. And uh, you can try it if you want. There are a lot of things people do with trying to get this to, because in applications, there are many, many applications where x dot is a of t x plus g of t. It's a very general form for an equation. If you follow my quantum mechanics course, you'll see it in there. But this is where we stop here. OK, so that's all I wanted to say. Go through these different examples, and you'll see a pattern developing here. It's, very, it's really quite nice, and there are, I mean, everything, when you start, start to see a pattern in mathematics, there's always deeper reasons for what's going on. Don't have um, time or the space in this course to go into that, but hopefully someday you may, if you're interested, go further in, into this topic.
this particular area. Okay, stop here, and I'll come back to Appendix C next time. So bye for now.